I've decided to split weapons up into separate guides because there is a lot to cover. This one explains everything about how one hand weapons and dual wielding works in Skyrim. Let's start off with the different types of attacks. First you have your basic main hand attack. Your main hand is your right hand. This attack will do the damage listed on the weapon, calculated against your target's physical mitigation percentage. So if you have a 100 damage weapon and your target has the max of 80% mitigation, you'll only do 20 damage. Luckily, no enemies in Skyrim will have this high of a percentage, so you don't need to worry about that. You'll notice that if you hit the attack button or attack key quickly after your first attack completes, your main hand will do another attack. From above, you can notice you swing right to left and then back left to right if you execute this correctly. Power attacks are executed by holding down the attack button. While standing still, this will perform a standing power attack. This type of power attack multiplies the damage of your weapon by two and has a chance to stagger the enemy. You can perform different types of one-hand power attacks based upon what direction you move while holding the attack button down. Forward, sprinting, backward, and both directions of sidestep each perform a different type of maneuver. They all will do the same amount of damage, so which one to use depends on the type of encounter. To dual wield, simply equip another one hand weapon in your offhand, which is your left hand. You'll notice that swinging with the offhand, you do the same type of strike every single time instead of the right to left, left to right motion of the main hand. If it feels like the main hand swings faster to you, you're right. Your primary hand executes attacks about 15% faster than your offhand, and this is reflected by the alternating animation if you time your follow-up swing correctly. So while it may look cool to alternate a main hand attack with an offhand one, you're actually gimping your damage because it would be more effective to swing your primary weapon repeatedly. So then what's the point of dual wielding? You execute a real dual wield attack by hitting both attack buttons at the same time. By pressing them, not holding them, you will swing both weapons at the same time as you can see here. This is not a power attack, it's just a dual attack. You do the damage of both weapons at the same time, as well as trigger any elemental enchantments or applied poisons. If you do wield, this is the only type of non-power attack that you should ever use. Finally, to wrap up the basics is the dual wield power attack. By holding down both attack buttons at the same time, you will do a triple hit. This is where dual wield shines, as each hit is considered a power attack, so it does double the damage, and you also receive an additional 12.5% dual wield bonus to the damage of each hit. This means your three hits are equal to about 6.5 regular swings in less than half the time. If you time it correctly, you can perform a fourth strike faster than you would normally be able to. During the third swing of your dual wield power attack, if you press both attack buttons again, you will follow up your triple attack with an additional dual wield attack to dish out even more damage. Moving on, the speed of your dual wield attack is based on your offhand weapon. As a refresher from fastest to slowest, daggers, swords, war axes, maces, everything else. Here, you can see a dagger in the main hand and a sword in the offhand performing a dual attack. By switching the same weapons to put the dagger in the offhand and the sword in the main hand, you're able to execute that same dual attack about 20% faster. The damage of the actual strike is the same since they are the exact same weapons, but your DPS goes up significantly by placing the faster weapon in your offhand. So keep this in mind as we begin with the perks. The first perk in the one hand skill tree is Armsman. This one is self-explanatory, every rank increases weapon damage by 20%. With all five ranks, your weapons do double the damage. This is visible on the item stats window. We start off with a 12 damage dagger and 17 damage sword. After purchasing all five ranks, our dagger shows 24 damage. The sword is at 33, not 34, because Skyrim does not use hold numbers and always rounds down. Robbed. Armsman also applies to upgrades. Here you can see a glass dagger increases from 14 to 27 damage with the perk, and a sword goes from 18 to 36. Now, without Armsman, we upgrade the dagger to 47 and the sword to 52. After purchasing Armsman, the dagger increases to 95 and the sword to 104. So Armsman is a great perk because it doubles the damage of all one-hand weapons across the board, including upgrades. Before starting on Dual Flurry, it's worth mentioning the shout Elemental Fury. If you use weapons without any enchantments on them, Elemental Fury increases your attack speed by 30%, 50%, and 70% if you have all three words. This is an amazing alternative to enchantments if you're able to live without Absorb Health or Soul Trap. The damage you will gain from the increased number of hits will outshine even the max elemental damage setup, and when combined with Necromage Vampire, it can be chain cast. See the links in the description. The shout can be used if you only have one weapon, but the impact on dual wielders is more significant. 
The next perk to cover is Dual Flurry that increases attack speed if you're holding two weapons. The key to a lot of the dual wield perks is that you simply have to have two weapons equipped. You do not have to perform a dual wield attack to gain the benefits, though it does increase how quickly your power attacks execute. It also increases the speed of your normal dual attacks and all regular attacks. Dual Flurry has no drawbacks and both ranks should be purchased as soon as possible. The 35% bonus also stacks with the Elemental Fury Shout, so you can see how dual wield setups will benefit even more from going this route. Another note on Dual Flurry, I know a lot of you guys love the look and feel of using two daggers, but you really shouldn't. The dual wield power attack with two daggers has a unique animation where you flip your primary dagger before performing the initial strike. Dual flurry does not increase the speed of this two dagger power attack because of that animation. It will increase dual dagger attacks and the speed of your regular attacks, which is great, but by using two daggers you are gimping your power attack capability. Since the triple power attack is the most effective form of dual wield damage, you don't want to lose damage there of all places. Above Dual Flurry is Dual Savagery, which increases the damage of power attacks by an extra 50% if you have two weapons equipped. While it benefits dual wield power attacks the most, you can still do a power attack with one hand and get the extra 50% bonus as long as you're holding two weapons. Every dual wield build should buy this perk immediately when you have 70 skill. To explain stamina drain and power attacks, the formula is displayed on the screen. The weight of the weapon is a major factor, which answers the question those of you have about the difference between heavy weapons and light weapons, this is it. A standing power attack with a 16 weight Daedric Sword drops my stamina by 69. Switching to a 9 weight Iron Sword, a standing power attack uses 58. And then by switching to a 4 weight Elven Dagger, a standing power attack only consumes 48. So the difference is not major, but for low stamina builds, heavier weapons will drain you more quickly. This could make a case for the next perk, Fighting Stance, which reduces stamina loss of power attacks by 25%, as you can see in the formula. Since this perk unlocks the upper half of the tree, you may end up buying it anyway, but as a standalone perk, it's useless. If you've seen my cooking guide, you'll know that vegetable soup is the answer to all of your stamina problems. You don't need this perk, and you don't need absorb stamina enchants. You may have been misled by the loading screen tips, but a power attack with 1 stamina does the exact same damage as a power attack with 100 stamina. By using vegetable soup, you can chain power attacks endlessly because it regenerates 1 stamina every second. If your triple power attack completes faster than the stamina regenerates, dual wielders should use the 4 hit trick by following up your triple attack with a dual wield attack and you'll be ready to chain the next one. For single weapon users, just follow up with a single strike and then power attack again. Now we'll skip past the weapon specific perks because they're all worthless. Alright, I'll cover them but don't waste your points in these. Bladesman for swords at max rank has a 20% chance to crit for 1.5 times the damage. Now that sounds great, except critical damage is calculated off of the base weapon damage using a standard attack. This means smithing upgrades and fortify enchants have no effect and power attack bonuses are not calculated. Your three perks will give your swords an average of two extra damage per hit using a fully upgraded Daedric Sword. Iron won't even round up to a full point of damage. Stay far, far away from this waste of points. Bonebreaker sounds awesome. At rank 3 it'll ignore 75% of an enemy's armor rating. My first build wasted three perks on this based on its potential and I thought I made a solid investment. PC users delivered the harsh reality by posting their armor ratings of everything in Skyrim. Armor rating for NPCs is calculated the exact same way as players. This means dragons, mammoths, giants, and so on have zero armor rating because they do not wear any armor. So maces do nothing there. Falmer and Draugr, who wear a handful of pieces and have low skill, usually have less than 100 armor rating. Most armored NPCs wear light and their ratings end up being 200 at the high end. As you know, the armor cap is, which is 80% mitigation. The majority of NPCs have about 0 to 10% mitigation, so if you have a 100 damage weapon and the NPC can only discard 10 damage, your 3 perks will get you back 7.5 of that damage, rounded down to 7, hardly a drop in the bucket. The only NPCs you'll see any major gain against is heavy armor wearing thugs and bounty collectors, and you'll gain an extra 20 damage per hit at best. Save your 3 perks and instead swing your mace one more time. Hack and Slash is the only weapon specific perk that deals any real damage, but its actual value is questionable. Every hit with an axe causes an enemy to bleed. The bleed effect lasts for 6 seconds and does damage over time. The damage is based on the material of the weapon, Daedric doing the most. 
Every swing, you start another bleed timer. So if you hit an enemy once and let it stand for six seconds, it would take five damage, five damage, five damage. But if you hit an enemy once, starting the bleed, and then kept hitting the enemy, it would take five damage, 10 damage, 15 damage, 20 damage, 20 damage, 20 damage. The problem with this one is that the enemy has to be able to bleed. This means no Draugr, no Skeletons, no Spectrals, no Dwarven Machines, no Dragon Priests. It works great against Bandits and Mammoths, but the majority of ruins that you explore fall into the no category, and you won't get the benefit most of the time. Across your playthrough, you'll get more damage out of the attack speed of swords, or the raw damage of the mace-sword combo, than you will from bleed damage. In the big picture, it ends up being a bad investment. The next perk, Critical Charge, is worthless too. A sprinting one-hand power attack does double critical damage. This does stack with the Bladesman, and it's guaranteed 100% of the time if you're sprinting while power attacking. But as we covered, critical damage uses your base weapon damage, not counting improvement, skill, or fortify. The most you're going to get with all these perks is about 21 extra damage. And have you tried doing a sprinting power attack? Not only is the perk itself worthless, but it's a pain to try to execute. Most enemies sidestep or back up before you can even sprint into them. Avoid this perk. Backward power attacks are equally annoying to try to execute with any consistency. They work great to deflect incoming attacks, but in most cases they're not practical. In the few cases you can find an enemy running straight into you, Paralyzing Strike gives you a 25% chance to paralyze the enemy for one second. An annoying maneuver with a low chance to do a weak effect. If you want Paralyze, enchant it on your weapon. The last perk, Savage Strike, is another awesome one. It adds an additional 25% damage bonus to your standing power attacks. This includes your one-hand power attack without moving in any direction, so one-hand weapon users should definitely get this. It also includes your triple-hit dual-wield power attack and stacks with dual savagery. With both perks, your power attack modifier is going to be 1.875, and your triple hit attack will do the damage of 8.5 normal swings in 10% of the time. The downside to this perk is the decapitation. It has the same chance of occurring as a finishing move, meaning it will only happen to the last enemy alive. The downside to this is for necromancers. Once a body has his head cut off, it cannot be raised again. Those who use raised zombie probably won't care, but for dead thrall users, this is a huge turnoff. Onto the weapons themselves, see my trade skill guides for how to get started with this madness. As you can see here, it is worth your while. These fully upgraded Daedric weapons go from the 20s to the 180s. We covered Armsman, it applied to everything and doubles that damage to near 300. You can also enchant your boots, gloves, ring, and necklace with Fortify one hand. This applies to all weapons except daggers. Robbed. With all four enchantments, the swords are up to 1100 damage and the maces are at 1123. When you go this high, it will not matter what weapons you use or what perks you have, because even on Master, nearly everything in the game is going to be a one-hit kill. It becomes really boring really fast. The few fights that aren't require two or three hits tops. You can go even higher with two potions, Fortify One Hand and Fortify Marksman. The recipes for this are in the description. Fortify One Hand, again, works on all weapons except daggers. Robbed. Fortify Marksman is only supposed to affect archery, but applies to every weapon type in the game, including daggers for once. Dagger users without decent smithing can use these potions to upgrade their damage. It's not hard to make yourself overpowered this way, so if you find it boring, don't use the Fortify one hand enchants and don't upgrade your weapons over 100 damage if you're going to be dual wielding. Even with this base template to maximize DPS but still limit damage, which is Armsman 1 out of 5 and no Fortify, the game is still too easy. This is how I would invest perks for a dual wield setup, by the way. Forget Savage Strike if you use Dead Thrall. So using Iron Weapons gave me a little bit better baseline. You can see Mace with Dagger is a great combination because the high damage Mace pairs well with the low offhand attack speed of the Dagger. Another ideal setup is Two Swords. If you aren't going for one hit kills, this setup is probably the best all around for an entire playthrough. The attack speed is only slightly slower than a dagger, but the damage you'll get out of an upgraded sword in your offhand instead of a dagger will be significant if you're using the fortify one hand in chance route. Mace Sword is also another viable setup and my personal favorite. For stealth builds, you can use any weapon. I read hundreds of comments about how great the shrouded gloves are for daggers, how awesome daggers are, but they apply to all one-hand weapons. You'll want the sneak perk backstab for swords, maces, or axes, which does six times the damage, and you'll want assassin's blade for daggers, which does 15. Add in the gloves and you'll do 30 times damage with daggers and 12 times damage with everything else. 
Now this is running long, so I don't want to get too deep into the math, but the bottom line is they're going to even out. Even though maces or swords will do more damage in total at the high end, low end daggers will outperform, and they can kill silently, so often they make the better choice. Face to face, daggers lose in damage, but this can be countered using Shadow Warrior. This does work for any weapon type. Shadow Warrior makes you invisible for one second if you sneak mid-fight. You can use this to attack and always get a sneak multiplier, but once you get the timing down, you can activate Shadow Warrior, then Power Attack to double the damage of your sneak attack. Overkill at the high end, but this is a great tactic for those still leveling up or using low damage weapons. On a final note, Ebony Daggers and some other unique daggers like Blade of Woe are bugged. They have the attack speed of a sword. They are still considered daggers for sneak and power attack purposes, but they suffer an attack speed penalty. Keep that in mind if you're planning on using either of those as they make poor choices. So in conclusion, one hand weapons are a great choice. Dual wielding is the most powerful method of dealing damage in this game and nothing else compares. Sword and board is great for defense, but you're better off dishing out more damage than trying to survive longer. Two hand weapons, archery, and destruction spells do not come close to this kind of effectiveness, and one hand makes an ideal choice for any playstyle. The hardest part about a one hand build is keeping the game challenging. Let me know what guide you'd like to see next. Thank you for watching. Not yet.